You know, as Oklahomans, we know that we have to be weather aware pretty much the entire year. We face well, tornadoes, wildfires, flash floods, uh, ice storms, <laughs> even earthquakes. So it's a good idea for us to plan and prepare for these types of conditions, just about any condition. On this month's episode, we're telling you some crucial information on staying safe during dangerous weather. In fact, the city has an emergency management department dedicated to keeping you and me as safe as possible during large-scale weather disasters, as well as many of the man-made ones. Now, there's a lot to cover on this show, so get ready and stay tuned. You may not know that I am originally from Moore, Oklahoma. And as you probably do know that on May 3rd of 1999, there was a huge tornado that cleared a path, destroying many homes, wiping out entire neighborhoods. Unfortunately, my parents completely lost their home. Witnessing this incredible power of Mother Nature, I've always made sure that I'm prepared and ready for any severe weather that could come through the Edmond area. In fact, as you can tell, my wife and I just had our own storm shelter installed. We feel a lot safer now. And in, in fact, uh, the city also keeps a close eye on weather and they're ready to alert us about any dangerous weather that could be approaching. Here's more about Edmond's Emergency Management Department. In early August of 2011, Oklahoma was experiencing a severe drought. As winds picked up, it set up the perfect condition for a large wildfire that began in Oklahoma City and quickly spread north, threatening the east side of Edmond. Its flames consumed anything in its path so quickly that residents were being told to evacuate the area. Many people don't want to leave their property when something's uh, when, when something is going on. They, they want to stay there and try to protect it the best they can. Uh, but by doing so, uh, they, they put their own lives into danger. As the wildfires swept through Edmond, many city entities and outside agencies stepped in to help. The Edmond Fire Department battled the fires while police officers blocked dangerous roads and redirected traffic. Alerting residents about the evacuation and assisting with the coordination was Edmond's Emergency Management Department. We did uh, such things as make announcements to the public using our Code Red Emergency Warning System. We coordinated for outside resources, like the National Guard helicopters that did water drops. We coordinated with outside agencies for some support because of the scope of the disaster. The purpose of the Emergency Management Department is to protect the citizens of Edmond uh, through mitigation uh, processes, through preparedness, uh, response, and recovery. It's an opportunity to evaluate what could happen here uh, in Edmond and come up with uh, specific plans on how we deal with that. How do we prepare for that? Uh, how do we respond when it actually happens? How do we prevent it from happening? That's the mitigation piece. Um, and then, you know, if something does happen and we respond, how do we, how do we recover? How, how do we get back to where we were? Responders to typical emergencies usually include the police and fire departments, but it could also include other city departments like Edmond Electric, the Public Works Department, and Water Resources. Emergency management helps coordinate all of these departments to work together. We have a uh, very detailed emergency operations plan for the entire organization, which not only involves city departments, but also close partners, Edmond Public Schools, the American Red Cross, um, all, all of our partners out there. Emergency management looks at all of the services provided by the city, making sure the organization is ready and equipped to respond to many types of real life emergencies. These events are mostly unpredictable, and when they become large scale incidents, like the hazardous wildfires, they require several departments and entities to work together. One of the emergency management department's biggest responsibility is coordination, uh, being able to pull people together, uh, being able to plant seeds, uh, to, to get people thinking and getting departments thinking about what their role is when certain things happen. Uh, we like to look at ourselves as, as being that cohesion that brings departments together that allows us to uh, respond more seamlessly in, in, in emergency situations. 
We know in Oklahoma we're going to have severe weather and it could be summertime severe thunderstorms and tornadoes or it could be wintertime ice storms and blizzards. Uh, and there's all kinds of other man-caused disasters in between. Uh, hazmat incidents, train wrecks, that sort of thing. When inclement weather is forecasted for any particular day, Brooke Pentons is one of the people you'll find in the Emergency Operations Center, or the EOC. We never know when an emergency could occur, so we have to make sure that when that emergency does re occur, we're ready to go. We're ready to start up the EOC within a couple of minutes notice and get going. Uh, we're looking at the bigger picture. Um, we're analyzing, organizing information, getting data, um, trying to maintain a situational awareness of the scene that, that we're dealing with, whether it's the fire department or the police department or a joint between the fire and the police departments. Warning residents and relaying crucial information is another duty of emergency management. There are several ways this is accomplished. A lot of times the media will, will contact us to let us uh, to ask us how we're preparing for that and, 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 and for us to offer up tips uh, to citizens as to what they can do to, to, to better prepare. The city may also utilize the Code Red service, a voice notification system that calls residents. Those signed up for this service can also receive notifications via text messages and even emails. Although it is not used for weather emergencies, it is used to alert residents about man-made disasters like a train wreck or a chemical spill or even a missing persons alert. We don't use it for common everyday notices. Uh, like many of our tools, we have to be prudent with the use of them. We don't want people to get so used to receiving them that they become complacent and don't pay attention to them. So we're pretty careful about when we activate and use our system. To register your cell phone number for Edmund's Code Red program, visit edmundok.com forward slash code red. You can also visit edmundok.com and sign up for emergency notifications from the city's website. The city's Facebook page also sends out important notifications during emergencies. And NOAA All Hazards Radio is another way to receive alerts from emergency management. We don't want to rely on one particular technology or, or one particular service for folks to be notified. It's, it's, what we try to do is use a combination of, uh, of, of the different venues out there that will allow us a better chance to, uh, to inform more people. Emergency management recommends signing up for special alerts that can be sent to you via text message or email. These are generally offered by local news channels and even the National Weather Service. After a destructive event takes place, emergency management has another important responsibility. Part of our job is to, is to go out and evaluate all of the damage and, and, and the severity of that damage and put a dollar figure on that, provide that through the federal system so that ultimately becomes a presidential disaster. And then when that occurs, uh, we, we're then eligible for funding to help uh, you know, folks and businesses and, and, and the citizens uh, get back on their feet. Helping residents better prepare for significant storm events is another goal of emergency management. During severe ice storms, it's important to have a plan and supplies that will help you and your family. Oftentimes, uh, this type of weather causes power outages. So it's very important in your home to have an emergency kit. In that kit, you, you're going to want a flashlight, you're going to want a battery operated radio, um, you're going to want to have uh, non-perishable food supplies on hand. You're going to want to have a water supply on hand. Uh, if you have a power outage, um, it, that can go on for, for, for many days. So thinking ahead of time and having that plan and having a kit with all of your emergency uh, supplies in one place will help you get through that situation better. We would like to see people stay home and not get out on the roads and not drive. Um, so at home, you're going to want to be able to have enough food for three days. And if you're caught in the snow while on the road. In your car, it's a good idea to have a battery operated radio to have that flashlight, maybe to have a few granola bars or, or snack bars just stashed, uh, stashed in there in, in case you do become stranded. Blankets to stay warm just in case that you become stranded on the road. Um, packing some extra clothing, stocking your vehicle with cat litter just in case you get stuck on snow or ice to be able to, pro to provide you some extra traction. You know, with snow and ice, it's always good to have your cell phone with you wherever you go, even if it's just a short trip to the mailbox. If the sidewalk is slick and you fall over and hurt yourself, well, having a cell phone on you allows you to call for help or emergency assistance. 
Coming up after the break, we'll show you how the Emergency Management Department helps other city departments train for large-scale incidents. That's coming up. Roses are red, violets are blue. If you're bored in February, we'll tell you what to do. Watch the new activity planner on Edmund Life TV. Emergency management works with many city departments to help coordinate the entire efforts of the city of Edmund. Now, this requires a lot of training and practice, from something as simple as a tabletop discussion exercise to a more complex, full-scale exercise, like the one that took place in January of this year. <laughs> On a cold, rainy morning in January, several students enter the UCO Wellness Center, sick and getting worse by the minute. What's going on? Uh, I feel nauseous. My stomach hurts. I threw up a few times. Okay. The students are actors, just part of a full-scale exercise to see how different city and college departments react to a large and very feasible emergency. We want to make sure that the things that we're doing are being done well, or if there's things we need to improve or gaps, you know, some improvement that needs to be done, equipment changes, uh, operating procedure changes, emergency operating operations plan changes, that sort of thing, we can address it. The responders are going to respond with lights and sirens and uh, they're going to find victims. Uh, they're students from UCO that are going to role play or act as victims and they're going to do the things that they're trained and equipped to do. These types of exercises take several months of planning, but the lessons learned help all participants for those rare moments when something like it really takes place. As more and more departments have to come together to respond, we find there may be issues. In the past, during after action reviews, we found that one agency couldn't talk on the radio to another agency, but yet they had to respond to the same incident. Coordination was lacking. Um, we have found that equipment that was supposed to work together didn't work together. And unless you have somebody paying attention at the upper operational and strategic level and making sure that integration, that coordination is planned for and executed, then you can have some, some real issues. If somebody did something innovative and it worked, we want to capture that and make sure that it's done again in the future because it worked. If there are gaps in procedures, gaps in equipment, uh, gaps in organizational structure, we want to address that too, either in our emergency operations plan or our standard operating procedures or our checklists. Uh, so it's a chance for us to assess just how prepared we actually are. Dangerous weather is probably Oklahoma's main large-scale threat. One thing about Oklahomans is that uh, they're very weather aware. Uh, they, they know uh, about tornadoes, they know about severe weather as it comes through and, and what it can do. Should severe weather threaten our community, emergency management may sound the outdoor warning devices, commonly known as tornado sirens. When we activate that system, we expect people to take shelter immediately. Our system's not activated to tell people to turn on the television. We activate our system we have determined there's an imminent threat to the city of Edmond and we want people to take shelter. And then get smarter. If you have a uh, portable TV or a radio in your shelter, your safe room, your, your protection area, 
go to that area, then turn on the TV, turn on the radio, and try to figure out what's going on, what the threat is, where it is, how soon it may hit, and that sort of thing. Take shelter first, then get smart. Though some may rely on outdoor warning devices to be their only warning for tornadoes, it's important to understand that they are not intended to alert people indoors. With today's home designs and the nature of storms themselves, hearing a tornado siren from inside a home can sometimes be impossible. Is the high wind and, and the rain and sometimes hail that are hitting roofs, that can be very loud inside, inside of your home. Uh, which makes it very difficult to hear anything outside. So it really is a false assumption that the sirens are, are going to notify you inside. We recommend that you have an NOAA weather radio or all hazards radio uh, in your home with a battery backup. Uh, we recommend that you monitor uh, media outlets. You can uh, do that over your, over your television. You can do that through the radio. You can even do that through the web. But use these alternate uh, sources for information while you're inside your home. Uh, and, and you'll have a better chance of being notified in case there is a severe, uh, a severe storm coming. Having a personal storm shelter or safe room is highly recommended. Because of safety concerns, the city does not have a public storm shelter. The reality is if a storm is coming, the last place you want to be is your car. If you have an opportunity to, to be in a secure building, uh, to get to the most secure part of that building, to get into a personal storm shelter, uh, to get into a basement of a building that's nearby, that's your best scenario. Uh, during a, a severe event, to get in your car and then drive into that storm just places you in greater danger, uh, particularly if you run into a traffic situation. Emergency Management offers a great program where you can register your storm shelter. By registering, Emergency Management assigns GPS coordinates to your shelter so they know where to look in case a significant tornado sweeps through your neighborhood. Now let's say we do have a tornado and we go out and unfortunately it's a large scale and there's nothing left. There's no debris for a home. It's hard to tell where there might have been a home. We can use our GPS information that we have that we looked up after receiving your registration and use our GPS system and we know where we need to walk, five feet this way, 10 feet this way, and then we can e more easily find your shelter. To register your shelter, visit edmundok.com forward slash shelter registration. There are a few necessary items you should keep in your shelter when preparing it for storm season. Some things to keep in mind are bottled water, obviously, and stacks, snacks that are going to sustain you if you need to be in there for a couple of hours. If you have children, um, things that are going to entertain them, coloring books, reading books, um, video games, hopefully the batteries last long enough. Um, AM, FM radio again, and a weather radio again, flashlights, um, and something that I hadn't thought about it actually until a resident had told me is they have a metal storm shelter and getting earplugs or headphones to wear while in there, because obviously if debris starts flying, it's going to get loud in there. Emergency management also offers other sources of important information and programs. If you have an outdoor event going on in Edmond, like a family reunion or a birthday party, you can sign up for Edmond's Weather Watch program. By doing so, you will receive alerts if severe weather is approaching your event. A great resource for preparing your family for emergencies is reading the Personal Emergency Operations Plan Manual. It is available to download online. Just visit edmundok.com forward slash emergency management. To have a copy sent to you, call 359-4564. It has a lot of resources as to preparing your emergency kit. It has a, a lot of resources as to how do you develop your individual plan. Uh, that, and, and, and how you can practice your plan. Uh, it, it's a great publication. Check this out. Emergency Management offers the Weather Radio Program, which benefits multiple occupancy facilities like well, daycares, nursing homes, schools, churches, and businesses with 20 or more employees. To qualify, the facility has to have a severe weather preparedness plan that they practice each year. Now by doing this, the city will provide them with a free NOAA All Hazards Radio. To apply, all you have to do is call 359-4564. Well, that's our show. I do hope you learned a lot about preparing for just about any kind of disaster that could happen in your community. For other great information about making an emergency plan, just visit edmundok.com forward slash emergency management. I'm Eric Smith, and I'll see you next time on a new episode of Your Edmund.